Hello, my name is Benny and I like hanging out in the garage. Today we're making Star Wars Imperial Credit Sabak Chips. So our story begins with a viewer, an Uncle Benny's Garage viewer, the few, the proud. He goes by the name of Mr. Grouch and he's responsible for such awesome suggestions as you should put a giant spider in your videos so the viewers have something to look for. Genius! He has a brother named Avery, and he knows more about Star Wars than you do. They like to play a game called Sabacc. It's a gambling game in the Star Wars galaxy. It's a card game. It's in the books. It's in the movies. It's anywhere there's gambling or gaming going on in Star Wars, there's Sabacc. Now, there's different versions of the game. One in particular is called Carillion Spike. Now on Wikipedia, it describes Carillion Spike as a dice game. But farther down in the same Wikipedia, it says that Carillion Spike was the game where Han Solo won the Millennium Falcon from Lando Calrissian. We know from the movie Solo, that was a card game. So here you go, Star Wars fans. Did they change the movie or is the Wikipedia page messed up? Okay, so Avery likes to play Sabak and needs some chips. So that's what we're doing today on Uncle Benny's Garage. We're making money on YouTube. Space money. Okay, so I go online and there are lots of different types of Sabak Imperial credits, different things, right? There's pretty much kind of a general, most of them sort of look like. So I found some designs on Thingverse and all the ones that I took from, I will link in the description so that I give credits where credits is due. <laughs> Get it, Imperial credits. So the designs I used, I altered, I cut, so there's a top side and a bottom side, and then I made a middle section that's hollow because I want to put some weights inside. I don't want just a little piece of plastic. I want something that kind of feels cool in your hand, slap it down, make a bet, have a little substance to it. So I got my designs together. 3DPO has been working 24 seven all week long. Just churning these things out fast as his little nozzle can do it. So I get them printed and then I gotta start putting them together. I put one side on to the middle and I gotta glue them, line them up. Uh, it takes a while. There's a lot of gluing and putting and gluing and putting and gluing and putting.
So the weights I'm using are these wheel weights. They're made to balance out the wheels on your car. They're made of steel and they have little sticky backs on them. Uh, so they're gonna go on there nice and easy. Each square is a quarter of an ounce. The small ones are gonna get a quarter of an ounce. The two middle sized ones get half an ounce and the larger ones get three ounces uh, uh, respectively. That little steel block on the plate is just so I have a solid corner that I can push the piece into to line it up square. Now the pieces where the different parts line up and the glues kind of come out the seam, I gotta sand that down so it's smooth, so it's flat, so it looks nice. I was originally gonna sand them really fine so I could kind of polish it back. I kind of like the look of the rough edges against the shiny, sheeny tops of the things. Uh, they look pretty good. But it's really just where the pieces didn't quite align perfectly and you can kind of see the little lines. I'm just taking that out a little bit. And that brings me to this week's Uncle Benny's Garage Cool Tool. You got your sanding block and you're working on stuff and you're doing things but maybe you want to do it in a place where you don't want to make a mess. Like a lot of these things, I actually sat inside of the coffee table and watched TV while I was sanding them. Well, I don't want to get stuff all over the coffee table, so I got my little tray. Now, this tray is actually a used drum head. Um, I got a few of them and I use them as all sorts of things. But in case you don't know any drummers, you can use any kind of a tray. I used to have one when I was into model trains and it was like a cookie sheet, but it was deeper than a regular cookie sheet. And I love that thing. I used it all over the place and I don't know whatever happened to it. But it was great. You put a little sanding block in the middle, you work on your stuff, boom, boom, boom. It catches all the mess. Gotta have one. I got this little case. It's from a table game. I was gonna use it for something and I ripped it all apart, but now I think it's gonna be perfect for the Sabak chips. We just gotta put it back together and spruce it up a bit.
I could have used spray glue on these bigger parts. It would have been a lot easier. The problem is that when you go back in with the fine parts and the small stuff that you're going to put the contact cement on, the fumes from the contact cement will make the spray glue let go. So you'll put something in there and it will bond, say, to the felt, but the felt will let go from the box because of the fumes from the contact adhesive. So I just like using the same glue throughout and I don't have any issues that way.
This set is a little Mandalorian themed because I know Avery's into Mandalorian and I thought, why not? It's a special edition. Okay, we got the small denomination. Next up, we got the bronze. Moving up from that, we got the silver bars. And then we got the gold. Then I was having some fun with the design and I made these little Imperial credits. They're double-sided too. And I made some of these. I made some coins. And then just to mess with them, these are gold pressed latinum, if you know where that's from. <laughs> All right, here it is. The official, unofficial Uncle Benny's Garage Special Edition Sabak Imperial Credit gift set. I think it turned out nice. Avery, I hope you enjoy it. Now, if I were to make these to sell, other than Disney owning me, uh, there'd be some things I have to do. I would need to refine my design a little bit better so the piece is clipped in, maybe with little ridges or whatnot, so they line up great and reduce a lot of the sanding, glue removal that uh, I had to do. Um, I would also resize them just a bit to really uh, minimize thickness but still be able to weight them. They, they feel pretty good. They feel like something you'd slap down and say, let it ride. I did actually have to print a bunch of these like twice, some of them three times because as nice as file sharing is online with designs and artwork and whatnot, there was a lot of issues with some of the files I downloaded. Once I started doing stuff with them, they, they just didn't print right. There was little weird things about them. I, I kind of had to strip it down and start from scratch. That took some time. Uh, also, I used the wrong kind of weights originally. The other weights that I had, were these little beads out of a dive weight. And I thought that they were not lead because I remember the guy telling me they were not lead, but I'm pretty sure that they are. They, you can squish them like with a hammer, like they're lead. So I did a, a batch of these and then I kind of did a little more research and I couldn't find anything that said specifically that the weights I have are the ones that the beads aren't real lead. And I didn't want to put lead in toy so i redid them there there was a lot of them that i had to reprint hey everybody thanks for watching i had a great time making this this week and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like subscribe share i don't have a patreon or a gofundme or anything clicking those buttons and and sharing this will help build the channel and you know let me keep on doing it thanks <laughs>